Good morning, everybody. How are we today? Good. So the last day of the delegation, how's it going? How was the past couple days? Was everything to your liking? Everything okay? Great. It was great. It was great. Good. Thank you. Good. Good. So we wanted to end off your, your delegation here. I know you guys are rushing to the airport in a couple hours. But I want to make sure we introduce you to some Armenian companies, some Armenian counterparts, and give you a chance to network uh, on a more informal basis. Before that, I'm going to do a very quick presentation, which I usually do to delegations, to show you a little bit more of the Armenian side, the Armenian touch. I promise you it won't take more than 10, 15 minutes, and then we can just go outside and start networking, and I'll introduce you to some people that you can discuss. Sound okay? Good. So. So the presentation that I prepared is, is called Select Armenia, and we've used this presentation many times. Uh, it's, it's quite interesting because usually when we get a delegation, the classic presentation you would be shown is an invest in Armenia sort of presentation that has the doing business index, it has you know the KPIs, it has all the economic indicators, and it's boring as hell. So I decided that we're not going to do that anymore. And we've, we've decided exclusively to never do that for any delegation because that's something that I can literally hand you a piece of paper and on the airplane back you can just look at all the numbers. There's no point in me presenting it. So why waste time on something that you can just Google and find? So what I'm going to give you is something that's a little bit more relevant and something that you can't get on Google. So there's a couple of things that, that's very important for a business. Not only the economic side, so the money side, but also the team. How do you operate in Armenia when it comes to the people and the team? And that's what I'm going to give you, the soft points, the people, okay? So this is the question I always ask. I say, what do, you, what do you think of when I say Armenia? What's the first thing that pops into your head when I say Armenia? Well, usually it's this, the genocide. It's the first thing that pops into people's head. And if you Google Armenia, the first 150 hits is probably about the genocide, right? And it's interesting because me being a diaspora Armenian and a lot of Le Armenian Lebanese living in Beirut, they would identify themselves as Armenian through the genocide. Which makes sense because from the day we were born, our parents have taught us about it. And then we teach our children about it and our children teach our children about it and so on and so forth. The problem with that is that our identity as Armenians start getting wrapped around gen the genocide, which is not true. We shouldn't forget the past, but we should also be looking towards the future. Or when I say Armenia, do you think of this? Well, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. There you go, okay. Or do you think of this? Some people do. A lot of people when I say Armenia, especially not Lebanese because you know Armenians, but if I ask a, a German, Armenia, they say Romania. I say, no, 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 Armenia. They say Albania. No, 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 Armenia. So at that point, as soon as they say Romania or Albania, this is the picture that they have in their head. So from that point on, no matter what I say about Armenia, I've already lost them. Nobody's going to invest into this. Makes sense. So I need to change that picture. Or do you think about this, Yerevan? Or do you think about nightlife? Or do you think about the mountains? Or do you think about fruits and the agricultural sector? Or do you think about religion, Armenia being the first country on earth to adopt Christianity as a state religion? But I bet you don't think of this, which is the new Armenia, the Velvet Revolution. No bloodshed revolution, the first of its kind in the world. I bet you don't think about this. Armenia is one of the only countries on earth that has chess as a curriculum in school. So every single Armenian that finishes high school knows how to play chess. Every single Armenian knows how to play chess. It's part of the curriculum. You have to know chess or you can't graduate. It's very straightforward. Or do you think of this? Tumo, robotics. Or do you think of the fact that Armenians created the oxygen masks for airplanes? Armenians created the color TV. Armenians created the MRI machine. I'm going to show you a little short video just to show you what Armenians have done for the world.
Their mind insensibly follows you. They filled your days with finesse, and they taught you to build your day in a way to feel that the hour turns into a minute, that the far is actually near. They gave minds to the things which are breathless, so that they serve your needs. And the main idea of it was to make your life easier. They replaced the black and white picture of the world today with brighter colors. They pulled closer the vital and removed the danger. And finally, they surrounded you with smarter things, which determine an easier and safer life as well. It's all because these people come from the same nation. And even now, they continue to give birth to people who are crazy and clever, the people who are able to dream more and create more. They made people's life easier, and they will continue to do it with the next generation. They are full of creativity, and they are seeking to attain something new. Armenia, nation of innovation. So, if, if Germans are engineers and Italians are designers, Armenians are creators. It's who we are. We create things. I bet you didn't know that the automatic transmission was created by an Armenian. Things that we use every single day, things that, that we take for granted, the ATM machine, it's such a simple thing. All of those things were created by Armenians. It's who we are. It's in our blood. We create things. And there's a very good reason why Armenia is the land of creative minds. There's a very good reason for that. The people. The people are who make it happen. So Armenians, and I'm going to explain very quickly why the people. Why? Why are Armenians so innovative? Why is it happening? Why does this happen in this way? Well, there's two reasons. One, because of the family. And I'll explain exactly what family has to do with being creative. And the second is resourcefulness, right? Armenia is small. We don't have any oil. We're landlocked. We've been under, if you look at our history, we have a very tragic history overall. So in order to continue existing, we had to be resourceful. There's about 5,000 different nations in the world, but only 200 have a country. And one is Armenia. And we're very proud of that. So when it comes to strong family values, Armenians, I'm sure if you've met any Armenian in Beirut, you know that their family is big, it's tight, and it's a lot of pressure. They're big, big families. They're very, very tight. There's no privacy whatsoever in an Armenian family. I mean, my mom calls me every day. It's, it's enough. It's, it's too much for me, but that's what Armenian families are like. And they know every single detail about your life, and that puts a lot of pressure on the kid. All of Armenian children are put in a situation where they need to either overachieve or drown. But it's always overachieve. Push for more, push for more, push for more, push for more, right? And what this does is it creates, first of all, expectation. So there's a very, very high bar set for any Armenian child that you have to be, if we've, if we've created the MRI machine, then what have you done? Every single achievement that an Armenian child has seems like nothing compared to the achievements that the nation has had. So the standard of bar is very, very high. And the second is because it's such a tight-knit community within the family, you learn to be very human-centric, very people-centric. You learn how to deal with different situations under very high stress. And from that is birth innovation and creativity. The second is the, the fact that we're resourceful. I say every single Armenian is, is a, has a PhD. We're passionate, we're hungry, and we're determined. If you give an Armenian a job, no, not a job, an opportunity, they will take that opportunity and they will hold on to it for dear life. They will be your best team and your best employee, I assure you. I was talking to an investor once and they said, I'd rather put money into an A team with a B idea rather than a B team with an A idea. And that's very true. An A team will always make money, always. But a B team will never make money, regardless how good your product is or your service is. And Armenians are truly the A team. So that's about the people. And that's what I really wanted to make sure you get. 
I'll show you a little bit about the market very quickly, but we've had this discussion so many times in the past couple of days that you don't really need to know it. Understandably, we've already discussed this. We're part of the Eurasian Economic Union, so access to about 100 million people. We have a GSP Plus regime with Europe that allows for 6,400 products to go into Europe without any customs. Uh, and we have neighborly relations with Iran. There's a free economic zone on the border of Iran that allows trade through that economic zone. And again, with no VAT, no customs, and no corporate tax, right? When it comes to the opportunities, um, I'm just giving you the first two quarters. Everything is up, basically. All of the indicators are up. Economic activity is up, export is up, import is up, uh, industrial volume is up, tourism is up, agriculture is up. Every single sector is up. So Armenia is on that growth path. It's been like that since last year as well. 2017 started the growth, 18 is continuing, and the forecast is for the next eight, 10 years, double digit growth or near double digit growth, and I think we can achieve it. We're gonna be very close to those numbers. Um, I already spoke a little about the free economic zones. Uh, I won't say too much. When we start networking, you can ask me about them. We'll give you more information about how economic zones work. But basically what you need to remember is the four zeros. No VAT, no profit tax, no customs, and no property tax. Zero, 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 zero. The four zeros for free economic zones. And these are just some success stories that we've had. Um, Gardenia, of course, you know. Nicolas, I know he's not here today, but I'm sure he's listening. Uh, we have Azad Pharmaceuticals, which is a um, Swiss company. D-Link, I'm sure everybody knows. Synopsis US, uh, FMDK in Europe, etc. So. That's it for us. I'm not going to introduce Business Armenia because you've been talking to Guyana for two days, so I'm sure she's been talking a lot about how we can help and what we can do. So I won't talk too much about Business Armenia, and I'll let you directly go into the mingling session. So what I'd like to ask is, there's coffee outside, there's cakes. Go outside, talk to the Armenian companies. I'll walk around, I'll introduce some key people that I would like you to meet. Uh, but before you do, we have a little present for everybody in the delegation on the table. So please, when you get up, take one of the presents. Uh, it's, it's Armenian King's tea. It's the tea that the Armenian kings used to drink 2,500 years ago. So <laughs> it's very good, uh, especially for you. So please make sure you take a box and, uh, and you're welcome to some coffee outside. So I wanted to thank you for having us here. And since we've been flying over Armenia, we've seen opportunities. I can assure you, from the window of the plane, we've seen the land, we've seen the agriculture, we've seen the infrastructure also. Why you have what you may need, what we can do together. We've seen it all. We've seen it the minute we stepped into the airport. 30 minutes to 40 minutes to get out, it's an opportunity in services. We can work on this together. We will talk about our assessment and how we can work together. There's a big potential. But I can tell you, there's a saying, Lebanese is not a nationality, it's a profession. Our profession is to connect people, create the ideas, and we'll work it together. So thank you. So thank you very much. Thank you very much to the Lebanese delegation. Thank you very much to Nicolas specifically for organizing this and, and having the, the courage to make sure that this happens. So please make sure you take a box as a present and uh, you're welcome to some coffee outside and I'll, I'll walk around and introduce you to some Armenian counterparts. Thank you very much.